Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Morning Coins with John and Chaz. I'm John. That's Chaz. Our producer, Jake, is alive and well. <clears throat> He's got, uh, Jake has lined up a great show for us today. We're going to be talking about the IOVO Omni Ledger. Yeah, this is interesting. Where'd you this find this one? Up. Just surfing around the net, you know, things pop up. Oh, boy. It's, uh, you, you, everyone, you know, I always get nervous because I think, oh, my God, what am I going to do for the next show? What are we going to put on here that makes sense, you know? The, yeah. And uh, here's a, a, a problem and a solution to a problem. And I think this is great because I overall solves this problem where we get used by corporate America for their own gains. And I almost says, no, we should get paid for what we do. And so this is what their uh, main project is, is uh, when you, when you, uh, you, your data gets collected, they will collect the data and they will pay you for people who use it. Okay. Okay, good. So before we get started, everyone, just so you guys know, uh, if you, even if you're watching live or watching on the VOD, um, this is Morning Coins with John and Chaz. Uh, you can call in at any time, use that call-in number, or go to zoom.us and hit that 468-186-430. That'll bring you in live. I'll have to turn off my little TV overlay I have here, but that's okay. You can come in and chat with us. And remember, this is a cryptocurrency and distributed ledger technology talk show. This is not an expert show. So we bring you guys the latest... Uh, stuff out there uh, as far as projects, platforms, and protocols in distributed ledger or blockchain cryptocurrency space, and we have a conversation. We broadcast live on Vim TV. Thank you very much for providing that service for us. Uh, the VOD goes on uh, our G1NBC, uh, Cuyahoga County YouTube, and on our G1NBC pages for the show, and yeah, that's it. So, and before we get started, we are not making any uh, investment advice. We are just well, going over projects, and and with that, we got a little disclaimer. The disclaimer, cryptocurrencies, futures, stocks, and options trading involve substantial risk of loss and are not suitable for every investor. The valuation of cryptocurrencies, futures, stocks, and options may fluctuate, and as a result, clients may lose more than their original investment. All investments discussed on this show are for informational purposes only and are not recommendations to buy or sell. Thanks for reading that, sir. So, yeah, back to IOVO and Omni Ledger. Uh, one, one announcement to make. Oh, hey. All right. Hold on. Let me get it on full camera uh, mode. This may be Jakey's last show. Aw. He's, uh, he's a foster kitty, and uh, we think we found a home for him. Oh, Okay. Yeah, so he's going to uh, he's going to actually go with some people that he likes. He's already met them, and uh, so. But you know, I, I'm sad that he's going, but I'm also happy that he's going to find a good home. How's this show going to do without a producer? I'm going to have to find another one. I got seven more. Now. You're going to go into a deep depression. You yeah. might not even be able to get your slides done. Separation anxiety. <laughs> so. Stalwart on our show for I, you know, a long time. I know. Well, let's um, yeah, let's lock in and uh, go through some of these links. Okay. Um, oh, of course, the first uh, is the IOVO link. Yep, and these links are available on the Steam post and on the Vim post. You have to copy, but on the Steam post, you just go to slides for today, click that link, and you got it. You're in here, and, and these are the links. So I, I found this article I was reading and there's a company out there developing a technology that would protect against the 51% attack. It's called the chain lock. I'm not sure exactly how the technology works, um, but they claim to have some kind of new way to, to develop this. The thing okay. is about any technology is that if you want it to be used, you can make a technology absolutely 100% safe, mm -hmm. but you can't use it. Okay. 
right? Because you're completely locked down. So they're developing a technology that would allow uh, to for protection against that 51% attack. Read the article, see what you think. Gotcha. Uh, Coinbase has picked up another uh, crypto, Zcash. Oh, man. Yeah, so they're expanding quickly. Uh, they've, they've got a system down. Um, and then our three payment system supports Ripple now. Ripple's expanding. Oh, boy. And then this last one, this was actually one you sent me. It was pre-search. Yep. And uh, I'm doing a test drive on that uh, <laughs> right now and to see how it works. And uh, the idea is pretty much the same as IOVO is that, you know, our, our searches and our data that we create of ourselves uh, have value. And, sure. Uh, we need to be paid for that value. And you said you got that right away, like you signed up and and you got some tokens for starting, and you're already kind of using it. Yeah, I am. Uh, they give you 25 uh, bonus to start. I'm not sure what what their PRE, what their tokens were. Right. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Uh, but I'm up to 34.25. Look at you. So what I'm doing is I'm running. Even if I know the URL, I don't. I you go through the pre-search uh, system, which is I have a Chrome uh, extension. Okay. Chrome add-on, so it pops up automatically. Oh wow! And I just run everything through it. So you found it was pretty interesting or pretty easy so yeah, far. Very easy. easy to sign up and easy to use. Okay. You can use your uh, your own uh, search engines. They come with a, a, a pre. Loaded list of search engines mm -hmm. like Google and Bing and DuckDuckGo and uh, some others. Right. You can, you can customize it and put your other search engines on there. So I like this idea. So I think that I'll be test driving this and letting everybody know. Okay. What's going on with it? Gotcha. So gotcha. I had a, uh, a just a, a, a definition of uh, what is a quote currency, because that comes up sometimes in conversation and articles. Uh -huh. And uh, so I just put this definition up there. It's from Investopedia. It's uh, a quote currency is a second currency quoted in a currency pair in Forex. Well, we use that same concept in cryptocurrencies. In a direct quote, the quote currency is the foreign currency and an indirect quote Quote currency is the domestic currency. All right. Explain that for people like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you can you use crypto as an example, like using a BTC trade for a Zcash or a BTC for a Steam? Sure. And, um, when you go on to get your quotes on online, if you use, I use TradeView for most of that. Very good uh, setup. When you type in BTC, you're going to get a list, mm -hmm. and the list is going to go BTC, USD, BTC, you know, ETH. You can have your BTC quoted value in whatever other currency you want. Okay, gotcha. So if you want it quoted in how many BTC to uh, other, you just pick that one. Mm hmm and then it'll, it'll quote the value in other, which is sort of cool. Yeah. Right? Um, and so they use that in Forex trading. Okay. Uh, I've done currency trading. <clears throat> Got my, my butt handed to me on a platter and never did it again. Gotcha. And why do we include it here? Why is it important to talk about for crypto? Well, I think it's something that everybody sees. And, not, and, and they brought up, you know, like I said, it's brought up in a lot of, online articles, mm -hmm. uh, but it's an important thing to know when you're trading cryptocurrencies. Okay. You want to know what the value of your currency is and something that you understand. Right. All right, very good. Today I had uh, two videos. They're short ones, though. Very okay. short videos. All right. Yeah. So I think total they're about three minutes. So if we can go ahead, John, and watch the video. Yep, we'll watch this first one that has the IOVO logo. Just give it a minute to load. Oh. 
Now, if I click on the Iobo one, and it goes to the It's Your Data one. So I don't know if they're not. Let me see what's going on in my screen. Uh, Internet of Value Amuledger is what pops up for me. Okay. It's interesting. It's not, um, it's not letting me interact with it. So I don't know if it is, um, an issue with how they're embedded or if it's an issue with my slides. So give me just a second and, uh, we'll see if we can get that in here. I think I got it. It's just in presentation mode, the, uh, play button wasn't working, so... See if we can get it to play in here in non-presentation mode. No, I can't. Um, shoot. Can I send you the link? Do you want me to send you the link? Yeah, just send me the link in uh, chat real quick. Sorry about that, everyone. Usually this is uh, pretty standard. I don't know if I messed up a setting or uh, what we did in... Okay, here we go. <clears throat> and then while that's playing, send me the other one. Okay. Sorry, everyone. We're just getting these videos set up for you to play, and then we'll go, we'll get back to it. I'm going to go mute here for a second, John, because they keep playing when I open them up. Yeah, that sounds good. Copying the link now, you guys. This is distributed broadcasting. <coughs> it's not perfect. And it looks like I'm getting some encoding overload issues, so there still might be a little lag. We're just going to... These are some short videos. We'll get them going, and then get back to it. They're watching. Watching slow internet. The rise of technology is actively working against us. Bots keep track of our... Having a little trouble loading today. I, I think my computer is not, um, it's not liking all the stuff that we're trying to do. <laughs> I was having trouble with mine this morning. Uh, the Google Slides were not authenticating. I couldn't get onto the system for a while. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, it's totally unresponsive, so. Just getting it set up here, guys. It's almost ready. And then we'll play it. See how this one goes. If it doesn't go well, we might have to skip this next one. Online privacy is dead. Personal data is worthless. The rise of technology is actively working against us. Bots keep track of our purchases, most visited sites, search queries and correspondence. Our information is resold for pennies. It is time to create an infrastructure capable of decentralizing data ownership and management. Welcome to the Internet of Value on the Ledger. IOVO, directed acyclic graph protocol, offering full ownership of your digital identity complete autonomy on your online activity, and full end-to-end -end protection from abuses of privacy. IOBO will turn the personal data into a currency. All data is immediately exchanged with the IOBO network token and stored with an encrypted personal wallet. IOBO tokens are needed by companies for targeting their ad campaigns, running search queries, or verifying credit history. From now on, companies will have to pay you whenever they would need to access your identity. No delays. No mining, no proof of work, no fees, and no scalability issues. You should be valuable. You should be recognized. Demand it. The Global Human Value Ledger. ILVO, your data is you. Own yourself. ILVO DAG, coming soon. Everybody 
wants to build a dag these days. They do. <laughs> Isn't what was the other one we did? Polka dot. Uh, polka dot. Uh, and then there was another one. I can't remember which one it was. Now I, I was gonna go back and look. I just simply did not have time. Yeah, because we also did like just what is a dag, and we covered those. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So okay. Acyclic. Distributed acyclic graphs. Come on, internet. I'm going to watch one more, everyone, because I think that wasn't too bad. I might not go full screen. I might just play it right here and see how it does. It's just going to start right up, guys. We're going to let the internet catch up. Your data is you. Own yourself. This is someone who worked at that Trump digital firm, Cambridge Analytica. These um, applications were designed specifically to harvest data from individuals using Facebook as the tool. If companies are going to be monetizing our data, we should share in that. Brittany, I know you guys are sitting down and talking to us today because you are looking to sort of change the way data is handled and bringing the, uh, you know, control of that data back into users' own hands. Corporations like Google, Facebook, Amazon, all of these large companies are making tens or hundreds of billions of dollars off of monetizing people's data. I've been telling companies and governments for years that data is probably your most valuable asset and individuals should be able to monetize their own data. That's their own human value. And people normally don't see any upside of that and are exploited. My motivation to join IOVO has to do with the fact that the people who have put together the designs for this technology are not only idealistic, but practical about the implications of the way the data industry currently works. It's become exploitative over the past decade, and individuals and their data assets are taken advantage of. Now, revolutions in blockchain technology means that this doesn't have to be the way of the future. IOVA will be able to provide a platform for individuals to finally exercise their rights to their own digital assets and property and be able to benefit off of the back of that. IOVO DAG, coming soon. All right. <clears throat> so thanks for watching those, everyone. I, I hope the distribution of it at least got okay as far as the audio. I know the video got encoded, over-encoded a little bit. So we're back to the presentation. I like that second one better than I like the first one, or I like that Britney lady. I mean, Google and Bing and all the other big uh, search engines should be shaking in their boots right now. <laughs> You know they are. You know they are. At any minute, Zuckerberg can lose everything. As soon as one of these platforms puts together the real deal, I, you know, I was hoping that Steam would do that. They're going through their own flux in the moment, um, so it's interesting, kind of being here and watching all that develop. Um, there's some other ones that are trying. You know what I mean? But there's not. It's not anything yet that's going to be able to onboard easily, get people to understand the system, get people to use it, and be able to give people the benefits that everyone claims. Even IOVO, even Steam, you know, it's still everyone's in alpha and beta. Yeah, they're they're in their infancy right now. So cool, but I like it. I I, I like the the way they splice together the news reports, and I like the stance on. On, on us taking back our data. And, I mean, we all had to live through... I mean, I don't trust Facebook at all. I call... No. On uh, on the steaming pile on the other show that I do, I call them the social media network not to be named. Because every time you just name them, you give them more validity. And, and let's face it, the average uh, internet surfer really is into Facebook. Really, they see Facebook as the internet. 
Yeah. And they also think that they post something and that the whole world sees it. And it's like, dude, only five people that you're friends with that happen to see your feed at that time are the only ones who've seen it. So right. whenever, whenever you make a post that says, dear Facebook or dear Google or, hey, you, stop this, it's like, you you know you're only talking to your friends on Facebook. Yeah. And the only way other people see it is if other people share it. <laughs> I'm like... That's why I stopped like posting kind of stuff like that there because it's just like either you get a negative comment from someone who doesn't believe the same way that you do or you look at it and you're like no one sees this because this is not the internet. This is just a this is a centralized social network that only a certain amount of people can see. Now, I still use it for promotion purposes and things like that, but that's about it and to and to stay in touch with like my family because they think Facebook is the internet. <laughs> yes. So it's like, oh, well, whatever. I find I'm using it less and less. Anymore. Oh, yeah. It's, it's worthless, honestly. And there's nothing creepier than going and searching for something on Chrome and then going back and seeing an ad for it 45 minutes later. Correct. You know? I think, yeah. It's like, yeah. so. So the, I think their approach to uh, our data is interesting, but that the next slide after the video uh -huh. I think really says a lot. Capitalism limits value to the measure of money. Human value is much more than that. Right. Yeah. It's, it's broader, in a broader sense. It's right? powerful. Exactly. And that's why we're all here in this space. Is like, we know there are different answers. And it might be, cap. some of it might be capitalistic in nature, but it's also figuring out what is the next step? What is the well, next? Yeah, and I would say that I'm, there's nothing against capitalism except the fact that they've taken it to the extreme where finally it's all about money and nothing but money. Right. And organizations are people. And so organizations can give money and that counts as a vote or a say. Right. So I'm the ledger. Okay. This is really cool. Refers to Iovo's status as the ledger of ledgers, a universal global database network acting as a base layer for different decentralized social and commercial applications. And as OmniLedger, I will become a growing, secure, and transparent infrastructure for various quantitative value management platforms and digital apps providing both user empowerment and social and commercial utility. Man, there's a lot of words to unpack there. Yeah, yeah, there's, uh, they're bringing it back to the people. They're, um, and I like the idea that they've set this up, that, that digital apps can be built on top of their platform. But all of them are doing that. That's what Ethereum does. That's what Steam does. Right. That, right. That's the that's the thing is like, and we've said this is that is who's gonna who's gonna really put together the application that claims that space and be able to onboard and get users and, and really accomplish their mission. Because right now this is a vision, right? So what is their what's their um, what was it that intrigued you about their protocol? Well, one was the D apps. The other was the fact that they're going to, my data is going to be secure, mm -hmm. right? It's not, it's a zero proof of knowledge. So they just have to accept the data without any backup on it. You know, they don't have to know who I am. Okay. Um, and uh, I get paid for it, which is my favorite part. Okay. Do they outline the kind of transactions or what you, what, you get paid yeah, for can, uh, what it is? Yeah, we can take a look at a slice of this because it's pretty, uh, even though the uh, the white paper was pretty pretty easy to understand, there's a lot in it. And so what I've done is I've set up some uh, some of slides from their um, presentation along with some other things so that we can take a look at this and see. But okay. the next, that very next slide, the benefits of IOGO for users. Yep. You get a data wallet. In access to the network, you own your data. It's secure and transparent. Your your data is monetization, so we, we get to monetize our data. 
and it's anonymous. And I added this one on the bottom there. It uses a, a gag blockchain. They use their own. They they're having the, they have their own. Yep, this is their own their own animal. Okay. And do we are they clear on what their what data is actually monetized and how? They they claim that all fields of data available. How am I going to get paid for my first name? Um. Because we'll <laughs> it's a common first name. I'm not the only John. Right. I don't know if John's a piece of data or not. I'm a what? I mean, what would you use that name for? How would you handle? What kind of analysis would you do with John? How you many know? how many Johns are there on the blockchain? Who's the most active John on the blockchain? Is there a John out there better than me? That's what I want to know. Okay. Well, you're the only person that wants to know that. <laughs> there might be a company out there doing that. Anywho, let's look at these global data trends. Yeah. So this whole data environment is growing quickly as Google and other data collectors have proved there's value to that and, and it's going to be constantly growing. If you look over in the right hand side there, um, Facebook, you know, what's it? Uh, I don't know if they're, they, they use commas. I think they might use mean. <coughs> 2,234 billion users. 40,000 and 3 billion USD data income? Yeah. Is that right or is it is it point, is it 2.234 billion users? I think it's 2.234 but and then 40.03 billion USD. Yes. I got gotcha. you. And then Google more than 2 billion users, 109 billion USD. It's a, it's a lot of palooza. It says market volume in billions of U.S. dollars. So 2007, 2027, it'll be up to 103 billion for global data market growth revenue forecast. That's a lot of Palooza, man. That's in a lot 2007, it was it was only 7.6 billion. Growing fast. Woo. I mean, According almost... to McKinsey, only one percent of gathered data is currently being analyzed. They estimate the market for big data. And now, okay, okay. So some of this is big data stuff as well. Yes. I but big you. data is made up of smaller pieces of data, right? No, I know, I know. I'll be. It'll be interesting to see how we can reclaim some of that. And that's the next slide. Start talking about that. We're starting to ease into the specifics here a little bit. I like this, this slide. It's pretty. Yeah, this is this is something that occurred. You know, when I look at this, I go. Google might just grab onto this and say, okay, we can do this too, right? And start to share, give you a little bit of info, money back for doing a search on Google. They won't do that. You think? They might do it. They might be forced into it. They might. If, too many, if enough people get that free search uh, thing and, and use it as a Chrome extension... I'm sure that's the analytics they use. Is how many ever many downloads of the apps is w what they use as metrics, or at least part of their metrics to determine who to buy. Right. Um, of course, on the other hand, large companies tend to have this arrogance about them, where they're slow to adapt to these types of technologies. Well, the other thing is though they already have they've already claimed the space. Right. So their first movers, I mean, they're going to, like you said, they're going to fight tooth and nail. Yeah, they're going to hang on. Why, why would they want to give away money, right? That would be the, I can hear the corporate meeting now. Why should we pay? We're yeah. getting it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Like only a small fraction of, like, they have the user base already. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. But if you look at, if we go back to that pre-search item they stand in between me and, and and the search engines and gather what i'm searching for yep so they're collecting the data right before google collects the data 
So recurring revenue from searches, a revenue stream from network search inquiries goes through IOVO and then turns it into big data transfers and vice versa it looks like. It looks like big data transfers go to the IOVO network and then go back into search inquiries. And then every search on the IOVO network is paid. So the company pays IOVO, IOVO pays the user, there's a transact fee from user to user. It says IOVO generates revenue through a transaction commission currently set at 3%. Hmm. Hmm. I, you know, yeah. and when you look at what's going on, what had been going on, people just do a search and someone else collects the money and you don't see any of it. I have no problem with 3%. Sure. So we talked about zero proof, uh, zero knowledge proof earlier, and I, there's a little description here what it is on the next slide. Yep, we're looking at it. Okay, a zero knowledge proof or zero knowledge protocol is a method by which one party, Peggy, for instance, can move to another, can prove to another victor that she owns, knows a value X without conveying any information apart from the fact that she knows value X. Okay. So there are our identities are protected. Gotcha. Right. And it, it, all they need to know is that, yes, they have X. Yes. Right. So and they, they don't know. need to know anything else about the person. Right. And typically in research, when you're doing statistical analysis, you don't know who the individuals are. <clears throat> and nor should you. Yeah, it's it's irrelevant right. because it could skew the skew the research and, and because if you know somebody's like for instance me, um, Celtic background maybe that would skew your research unless research is oriented to do to doing that kind of cultural investigation. Right, right. It's time for promotion. Bum, bum, bum. All so right, everyone. We, uh, we're still waiting on uh, Mana to come back to us with the uh, the um, the project that they're going to use for the yeah, kids for the children in refugee camps. That's mm -hmm. the name of the word I was looking for. Uh, and so, but still, every week uh, they're depositing Mana into my Mana account, and when that day comes that they release the uh, the ability to send it. Um, I'm going to send my mana to help some child in a refugee camp that maybe needs new socks or food or whatever he needs. Cool. Uh, I like that. I, I simply, it, it's, you know, I can't say that I understand how they feel because I've never been in a refugee camp. My right. knowledge is limited to pictures and commentary. Yep. And, but I can't imagine it's really good. I have been camping and out in the wilderness and i know what it's like being out there you know very limited resources you have to you know and if you were out there with thousands of other people it would not be fun you know so yeah. hopefully we'll we have links here on this uh slide for your favorite host of this show you can sign up for mana receive these deposits weekly into your account and when you sign up using these links, it actually gives us an increase in the amount we're receiving. And then all of us together can send this money to the project. And these links are also in the description on the Steam post for the show. And then you can copy and paste it in the uh, Vim post for the show. Right. So I encourage you know, the viewers and the listeners to sign up. And then we can all do something together to help somebody else. Okay, cool. So on the next slide, we have uh, proof of value action. Um, it sort of gives a, a rundown of how that system works. Reward, you know, IOVO rewards data sharing. Um, it has a scoring system too to score the value of the data, which I thought was interesting. 
it's a it's a math, really highly mathematical thing for me anyway. Right. That's where they would take my first name and say that's not of high value. Well, it might <laughs> maybe by itself, but once you start grouping all the Johns together, maybe it, it goes. See. Up. Who knows? See. <clears throat> so the user, if Go they what. I'm just trying to look at the number two. It says, IOVO scorings let users find the data they need and rank it. So the user will like something, the dApps will get feedback, and then more complex rankings will go from IOVO to the to and from the researcher. And they'll use existing scorings and make their own. Okay. Yeah, so they have a way to say, yeah, that was good. We need more of that. Or right. you can up your own scoring system for filtering. I'm still looking for use cases. I'm still looking for them to like actually use one example and run through these four charts. You know what okay. I mean? It, oh yeah. Is it in there? Yeah, it's coming. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, sorry, I don't mean to speed you up. No, no. You can go. As, you, <laughs> that's just me. I'm like, I'm always like, all right. So tell us how to use. Give us an example. Show us how this is gonna happen. In a general sense, we know what data is used for. <coughs> they track us. They see what we do so they can respond. Maybe it's even medical, the medical industry. What are people researching? What is their main concern? Right? Mm -hmm. like, like, no, I no, I agree with that too. But like, take, for example, something, one piece of data collection that I don't like that, that's very popular these days is the devices that auto insurance companies will say you can put in your car so you can achieve a decreased rate on your insurance. When right. really they're just monitoring how fast you drive, how slow you stop, if you tailgate people, you know. Watch your rates go up after you plug that thing in. Exactly. Like they pitch it as a, as a way to decrease your rate. And it's like, well, yeah, if you drive the way they want you to drive... And so what happens if you have an off day and you do something a little bit nutty and they're going to go, oh, you know, like you drive maybe a little too fast for the for the area. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I'll give you a good example of why this is bad. I used to drive a truck for a paint company. Mm -hmm. And I had an address I needed to find. Okay. I'm driving down the road and I'm looking at addresses. Well, there was a boulevard traffic signal. It's not at an intersection. It's just a place to stop, and the other cars can turn around in front of you, right? Right. Going in the direction. Well, I wasn't looking. I was looking for addresses, and I went right through that sucker. There was no cars coming. Yeah. And so I got a ticket. <clears throat> I wasn't trying to break the law. I was trying to find an address. Right. And, and you just, you're looking, and it's just, yeah. Yeah, things happen. Yeah, and stuff happens, and I so I can see those type of things creating us more, giving the auto company or the insurance companies more reason to jack up your rates. That's all it is. Yeah. Listed as a savings device, yeah. more so like a rate increase device. I've seen a number of those uh, get returned. Because they know where you're at, they know what you're doing. Right, yeah. You drive through a crappy part of town. So yeah. Rates, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Anywho, so we got an overview here. You want to walk us through this figure? A little smaller picture of what you were looking at earlier, but I want—I like this one because it included the wallet. It has wallet, network search, <coughs> encrypted data goes to a company. Zero knowledge proof fits in over there. Money from the company goes back to the user. Requests for the IOVO network data go from company to IOVO. And then the IOVO network sends the network search data back through or to the user. Encrypted data that is sent together with a zero-knowledge proof, a full guarantee that the data is correct, precise, and no other information about the user is leaked. Okay. So they're, all, they're using their layer, their base layer, to say, you know, we have this, or, or this person's data is their own. You only need to know X, and here's, here is proof that they meet the criteria of X. Right. 
which is good. I want to maintain my anonymous uh, status. I don't want people knowing who I am so they can track backtrack it to me and say, oh, you were looking at guns on, on the Internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe I was looking at guns because I wanted to see what kind of gun was on a movie I just watched. Good point. You know? Yeah, that's a good example. So I, it might have been a totally innocuous search, and at least I'm protected against somebody trying to flag me. Okay. The, the next slide actually shows the D apps, how they op interact with the IOVO uh, network. All right. And their claim is, of course, that the fields of uh, data, the different categories, is unlimited. There's, there's infinite amounts of different kinds of searches you can do. Mm -hmm. And so this just shows you that the, the D apps ride on top of. Now, there's some ideas for your use cases, medical data, shopping, social apps, education, travel, insurance. See, so what they're suggesting, if we use Steam as an example, they would be a social app data that would have to go through the IOVO network for analysis. Right, if they, if, yeah. If they want. Yeah, so if there's a search done, which... Or the articles you look at mm -hmm. on that. Let's say there's a D app for, for Steam. When you do a search, where you look, what you read is categorized and anonymously to the IOVO, IOVO uh, platform. Gotcha. So what are people looking at? And I just put a slide in here for um, scoring just so you can get an idea. I think the two bullet points at the bottom really say it. <clears throat> An insurance company runs on top of IOVO and every car incident involving a particular driver is recorded as a partial score in an IOVO transaction. The final score is the driver's insurance premium. So that's what we were talking about though. Yeah. So this would be a D app that you would have to voluntarily, you know, offer yourself to. Right. You would have to expose your, your, your personal information. Following each transaction, the buyer would give a partial score to the seller. Then the final score might simply be, be made up of all the partial scores. Hmm. Interesting. So it's really in line with what we were just talking about. But this one is not paying attention to where you drive. It's, it's actually incident-based or... So it would have to be something that actually happened that was... Right. Know, good, but there would still have to be some kind of reporting mechanism or recording mechanism for well, those incidents. A lot of, if you go like to Carfax or Car Gurus, they mm -hmm. can tell you if a vehicle's been in an accident and what their maintenance history is. Yeah, sure. So somewhere along the line, it would be attached to you if you allowed it. So I, I, I'm thinking when you go to the D app, that's going to be part of the requirements. Okay, right. you want to be part of this? You got to give up some information. Okay, I got you. And that brings us to the next slide: use cases, right? Mm-hmm. So DAPs built on IOVO. Influenami. Almost sounds like the influenza. It does sound very much like influenza. An app that tracks when you get sick. Yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. This is an app in an online marketplace. Allows to discount your payments by posting a social media content requested by a place, product, or brand. So if I go into a rest restaurant and I post something on the uh, IOVO network, they'll immediately give me a discount on that particular restaurant before I get to the, the checkout. Okay. I don't have to wait for it. It happens right away. Right. I like that. So I do too because... Well, I like that. Uh, the other part, it says discounts can stay unused and be traded on the marketplace. How about that? Huh. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse These are apps that IOVO has built. Then uh, let's go to the second one. Drop is uh, let you so let you share 
text, video, or photos, can, I'm trying to read, relate them to a specific place on the map. Right. So this is data that you create. Mm -hmm. And it adds a little social layer, it looks like. Yes. Right, and you can read other stories, and you, if you're checking in somewhere, you get credit or you get paid on that. Right, for posting it. I think that's great. Hmm. Okay. I'm not one to go around telling everybody where I'm at, but I like the restaurant one first. That was good. Um, I owe Go Banks. Here's another one. I mean, you can use this for scoring is what this typically is for. How would they do that? Oh, it's based on AI of the data from the Innovo network and external networks. The network protects the assets and data of users in the system. Transactions are carried out using tokens. Yeah. I think it's, uh, there's more coming, more apps are coming, but I think those were three of the uh, uh, ones that, are, that perked my interest the most. Okay. Because it yeah. covers a lot of ground. You know, I just see a lot of overlap with all these companies trying to do the same thing. Oh, yeah. Well, we've talked about that. There's going to be a shakeout. Some are going to make it, some are not. Yeah. They're going to go by the wayside. I mean, look how many social companies uh, like Facebook that have, you know, just dropped out of sight. Yep. They just weren't able to compete. Sort of like Sears and Kmart, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, everybody. Got a little bit of a cough today. I didn't have it earlier. All of a sudden, we go live, and here it is. And you picked it up from your kids. Yeah, I know. Trust me. So we have a shameless promotion slide coming up, John. You can do this one, right? Sweet. I sure can. So let's get Steam on Coinbase. Um, but if not... Here are our links to Coinbase. If you're new to crypto and you don't have an account yet, um, go ahead and use one of those links. They're in the description on uh, Steam. So you just have to copy and paste that or, or click on the link on Steam, copy and paste it on Vim. Or if you go into the slides, there's a link for the slides. Scroll down to this slide and select one of those links. Open up a Coinbase account using our referral link. Invest $100 and you get that 100 back or you get that hundred dollars in cryptocurrency of your choice and you get ten dollars extra free uh, Bitcoin and your favorite host also gets ten dollars in Bitcoin so it's a good program to onboard people um, especially in the United States uh, they have a bunch of different cryptocurrency tokens on Coinbase and uh, so we always uh, recommend that people use that over here for those of you, for more seasoned investors, probably not, but that's okay. You already probably have a bunch of crypto sitting around in ledgers and other cold storage units anyway. So if you're new and you're watching this and you're like, ah, let me check that out. Click on either mine or Chaz's name for the direct link. Put $100 in there and see where it goes. What's the worst yeah. that can happen? And we're going to talk about where the market's going coming up here in a little bit. It's down, down today, down this week. Just like, just like you predicted. I got an ugly chart to show you. But Ugh, anyway. I don't want to look at it. Anywho. <laughs> the next uh, next slide, when you're talking about other projects <laughs> and how the competition, you know, there's a lot of people out there doing it. Yep. I always recognize this, and they've put out their chart on them versus the other guys. Oh, boy. Okay. And, uh, and of course, they're... This chart shows them as being the top dog. Well, why wouldn't it? It's their chart. Yeah, exactly. So they said they're fully decentralized storage. They can keep uh, high sensitive data, and they have very high post quantum encryption. Don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Iobo. Quantum attacks resilience. See, I want to know how they can, how they know they can even prevent that. Then you would have to know what a quantum attack is anyway. Yeah, that's that's more. If we got any techies uh, watching, 
right now. Maybe they can explain that to us. I'll tell you what. Every day I open my mouth, I reveal how much I don't know. I'm telling you, the older you get, the more you realize <laughs> you don't know a lot of stuff. <laughs> These guys are talking. Like, just like uh, Ned, the, the CEO of Steam It, is like uh, laying out his benchmark of next steps for what the Steam blockchain is going to do. And I read through it, and I'm like, shit. All these people are replying, and like some are good, some are bad, da 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 da. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm glad you guys are following because I'm totally lost. I can't. That's not a wonder <laughs> why I still have yet to be that successful here yet. So that's all right. We're still having fun. All right. So anyway, and thought, oh, and and here's the other one. They have their own blockchain, and they have their own DAG uh, technology. So there you go. Yeah. And uh, other than uh, Data Wallet, they're the only ones that uh, have uh, D apps that they can build on their system. No, Data Wallet. Oh, you said other than Data Wallet. Yeah. Right. And uh, here's a good one, too. User-created smart contracts. That's interesting. It's like I they're... Just... Smart contracts really need to be made more usable for everybody. Well, these guys are combining the pl the, the pros of a lot of the current uh, tokens and coins, or, yes. pro or or DLT projects, and trying to make their own. Yeah, they're they're picking one from column A, and one from column B, and making a what they consider to be a good program. That's why they call it an omnigraph. Yeah. Okay. So, next slide is the token functionality and economy. Just really a basic chart of what how that system works. But down at the bottom, I thought this was interesting. In that green uh, section, it says, in addition to the standard I IOVO token, IOVO allows users to create their own token on top of IOVO. These tokens can be used to power developers' own D apps and services. Mm -hmm. So much like much Ethereum, like Steam and Ethereum, yeah. the first ones to be able to actually do it, EOS that can have tokens within another system and have it replicate and be effective and still have a good number of transactions on it. Da 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 da. da. They're going to claim the space. So this is the race I think for the next two to three years is. Who's really going to be able to build that and get users to go and and adopt it? That is the key: is getting the users. And uh, with a lot of projects out there, it's not going to be an easy task. Yep. So they do have a roadmap, which I always like to see. Oh my God! Look at how busy that is. Yep. There's a lot going on there. They've broken it down into uh, small chunks. Now they're in the private token sale round, about to go into the public token sale round, right? Yep. Okay. And the node, the node, nodes are going to be released soon, and the wallets are going to start the end of the year. Yeah. So we might be able to get involved in this <clears throat> by the end of the year. Why? It's public. It's quarter three now. I haven't seen a sign up for it yet, though. So. Oh, see, they're behind. It's already December. Well, that doesn't mean anything because I haven't seen it. You didn't research it? This is our token for the day? Dude, I'm busy. You didn't go try to buy any? Here, I'm going to go pull it up here see if I can go buy some. You can go ahead and talk through the roadmap. Okay, sure. <laughs> I need to enlarge that. There we go. You through this. So we're, we're in about. You seeing it? Are you sharing your screen with me? Oh, hang on. No, I'm not. <laughs> Is that what you wanted me to do? You got to tell me that. Well, of course, you have to give them a roadmap first. 
Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> I can't even read the small print on this. My eyes are so bad. Yeah, you have to. Uh, no, they're looking at the roadmap. You don't have to share that. Oh, okay. You just have to read it. Too late now. We already went through some of it. It looks like you have to give them your email to get more information, to join the revolution, and yeah, uh, you have to give them a full KYC to apply to be in the private sales. So, yeah. Listen, yeah, bottom line well, is they're behind just like everybody else. I think that, uh, you know, KYC is a necessary but unfortunate uh, part of investing, I think they're trying to protect themselves against securities laws. You know, in a private placement, you have your rulings. The rules are much more loose yeah. than if you're doing a public uh, placement. So. Okay. How are they going to distribute their tokens? Here it is. There it Token is. Metrics. A billion, huh? We need a billion IOVO tokens. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much they're worth, but shoot. <laughs> well, if they're gonna if they're thinking big. I know, there's a lot of data out there. I hope somebody did the math on that. So they did a twenty percent smart drop, ten percent are locked. Thirty percent goes into the private sale, twenty percent is going to the team and advisory. Uh, and we're going to look at some of the team here in a little bit. 10% uh, public sale and 10% is in reserve. Do we know their smart drop and, and how people, how they make those smart drop determinations? Like, no, I don't. who's getting them? Okay. But if you read their white paper, they'll tell you. Oh, all right. Well, I'll check that out. <clears throat> Fund allocation structure. 50% goes towards development. That's good. That's important. Legal, foundation, team. administrative, team, PR and marketing. Now, I wonder this graph, like that, that right-handed graph, is that that must be of the 20% team and advisory funds. Or is that separate? Oh, it's token that, allocation. So the left, is the, left the, is the distribution. The right is how they allocate. How they're going to use it after right. the distribution phase. Right. Right. Okay. So it's good that they're they're thinking about development. Sure. It's going to, well, I mean, that it might even be too low of a number to, for what they want to achieve. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, it depends on how good and how generous their developers are. Uh, part of the team is on the next slide. And to answer your question, yes, I did check LinkedIn accounts. Who's the other founder? So it says co-founder. Where's the other co-founder? Because there's head of investments, partner, partner, partner. Yeah, I know. There's they have quite a substantial team. I couldn't get all of them. I think <clears> we have about five slides. Okay. We wanted to cover the entire team. Uh, and it's interesting that they broke them up so the co-founders weren't next to each other. I don't know why they did that, but so I did check out. I can't even say. It. I'll call them crazy. I did check out Crazy's uh, LinkedIn and. Uh, it's Christoph. Okay, great, thanks. You can say that for me from now on. Uh, Joshua's page as well, and also Brittany. Oh, I like Brittany. Brittany. She's got that, you know. She's in the video. Yeah, yeah, she looks, I wouldn't want to mess with her, I'll tell you that. Huh. Well, she, I got a better one coming up for she you. She looks like she could take Zuckerberg and punch him in his face. And she's probably thinking about it right now. <laughs> That's how they got her to smile. Yeah, I know. She needs to put a smile on her face. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She took just... that picture. Crypto Barbie. I'm serious. Does, did they really put this on their website? I mean. Is this from their website, too? Nicolette is yeah, known as, the, as Crypto Barbie and blockchain 
Grew up in Beverly Hills, entrepreneurial parents. Okay. I mean, just the whole description is like, okay. That's great, but... Oh, wow. The one that really sort of piqued my interest was uh, she later founded Sensory Code, a company that provides a bridge between art and real estate. What is that? I've never heard of it. I didn't want to look. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. I'm not sure how you bridge a Rembrandt with a uh, Frank Lloyd So Boy she's right an now. advisor. So she's an advisor. So yeah. these guys, uh, okay. Well, what do you guys think? What do you all think? Iovo. They have Crypto Barbie as an advisor. I don't know. Who could go wrong with that? Good for them. Well, cool. Thanks, Chaz. Thanks for running through that platform. Be interested so, to see where they go. Yeah. Now the bad news. This I don't want to hear that. Weird. It's hor It's horrible. I don't I even mean, want to bring it up. I know. It's like... But you know what? What goes down probably will come back up. <laughs> you say probably. Well, I'm, I'm using that as a term that maybe not tomorrow. <laughs> maybe not tomorrow. Maybe but not in you, maybe not in 2019. Your uh, Christmas money investment theory might. Uh, yeah, it might bring it back up to four thousand. Like when I was talking about Christmas, you know, we're talking small yeah. transactions. So we might see some action in January, a turnaround, after they get all their money, and they buy Bitcoin for their friends. Right. I'm not saying it's dead or anything. I'm just saying it's not going. We've, we've experienced, the. it seems like we may have experienced the bubble, and it'll be a while before any of them get back up to that, if at all. Yeah, like, so maybe that 20 grand per Bitcoin was the bubble. 3,600 might be getting more reasonable, 1,000 might be more reasonable, and then we see it go back up to 10 or something thousand in like five years or so. Is that is that wrong, or it, it, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I don't, my crystal ball's not working real good lately. But yeah. Well, it worked last week. It didn't work the previous month. Yeah, I know. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, what makes... I think the, the the coupling of Bitcoin to the rest of the cryptocurrency world is uh, is something that uh, we just have to live with for the time being. It, well, it, it's yeah. The, well, the decoupling isn't going to happen because it's still the mo it's still the biggest trading pair. So you want right. to it's your it's the until they figure until another one of these figures out an easier fiat to purchase crypto thing, then you have to get Bitcoin first. To get okay. anything else, or Ethereum, but see okay, where well, that I'm is. I'm telling you that Ripple XRP is going to take first place. It's going to push Bitcoin out. Do you Just have more? Out, hey, here. do you have more Ripple than you have Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> or more more Ripple than Sense? I don't know. More XRP. No, but that's cool. I think that XRP wants it. Once the boat starts to sail, is going to go flying past Bitcoin. You're fanning the flames of centralization. You're going to get us kicked off steam. I know. Your XRP evangelism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, putting it out there for informational purposes. For informational purposes only, not recommendations to buy or sell. I am not recommending to buy or sell. And the last slide I think we got there is uh, our test drive. Oh, the pre-search? Yeah. So, cool. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check that out, man. Look at you, 33.25 pre already. Yeah. Do you know, I, is that I, an ERC token or what? Is it their own? Does it run on Ethereum? Know. Is it their own? I don't okay. know the answer to that yet. I haven't. Uh, All right. I just decided to jump in. Cool. So everyone check out pre-search and, and Morning Coins will probably be covering them soon.
Yes, I think uh, the one thing they did say in their uh, uh, their website was that I can convert pre to other cryptocurrencies. Good. So I, Good. I can get my wallet and flip it over to some other cryptocurrency and, and go from there. Okay. Cool. I mean, that's good. I like that. <clears throat> and why not? I mean, why why not use pre-search instead? I run everything through there. Even the URLs I know, I still put them in there. And do you know, like, what what do you get per search? Is it like 0 .01, 0 .05? I think it's 0 .25, I think. 0 .25, okay. All right, Chess. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's a good show. I, I really like this project. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, we've got some changes coming up. Uh, first of the year, and I'm going to start promoting it now so people know, is that instead of using um, my John Spaulding account for to broadcast this show, I'm going to use the G1N token account. So that's the first announcement, is that this show will still stay on Vim, still be uploaded to the different areas that it has been, but it will be housed now on the G1N token account. Um as other shows should through the G1NBC network. Um, um, the steaming pile will still be on mine. And, yeah, the other one is we have the G1NBC holiday countdown that's going on on the G1N token account. You should see a banner ad at the bottom of the Steam post, hopefully. I made it this morning trying to figure out how to get better at doing that. So we'll, we'll get that figured out. And then I think that's it for the G1NBC announcements. We'll have some more information for you guys on how to get involved in the G1N token project um, as soon as we talk to corporate. Right? Yes. <laughs> but we got some exciting stuff in 2019 for uh, you guys to get involved with Chaz and I and help grow this show and, and help us expand the G1NBC uh, imprint uh, across the globe. Right. So thanks for tuning in. This is Morning Coins with John and Chaz. And we'll see you next Friday. Thank you, everyone. All Thank right, you. everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Good weekend. Follow G1N Token on Steam It. And uh, take care. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.